him and saw his show and listened to him a little bit, and he said, absolutely. And so um, that started that one. And Kelly Clarkson and I, the way we started out, she asked me to sing on her finale show uh, of American Idol, and we became friends through my nieces, and then we did Crossroads together, and then she came to me, and she said, would you mind if I asked Narvel to be my manager? And I said, I think that's exactly what you need. So it's been a good team. And, and there's both stars are... Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both stars now, but they will be giants. I agree. I agree. Do but you before you reinvented yourself with Broadway and then you get your time, you reinvented yourself with movies and Tremors, mm -hmm. didn't uh -huh. you? I mean, yeah, that was in 89 when I did Tremors. But you would consider that a reinvention, I would, sort. yeah. You're, you're exactly right. Okay. I've just jumped that, that phase in my life. Uh, yeah, doing the movies. I did 11 movies, and then I did Broadway, and then doing the television. I just had to keep jumping around. And everything, my fans kept traveling with me, and, and, and they would go with me on everything. So um, thank God for that, that you, they hung in there with me. You mentioned songs. Um, it's got to be get, becoming increasingly harder for, for an artist to find a hit in Nashville because everybody is picking at the same people. I mean, you know, if it's the Bureau or whoever it happens uh -huh. to be, you know. Mm -hmm. um, how hard is it to find a hit? How many songs now compared to before? I mean, we're 100 songs before, 500 songs now? Well, one, one summer, Narvel and I went to Hawaii, and in the trip, I had a duffel bag full of cassette tapes with probably 10 songs on each cassette tape, and every little pocket was jammed packed full, nothing but cassettes. And I'd listen and I'd listen and I'd give the stewardess, I said, would you throw these away? And I found one song out of all of those. Now, nowadays, people MP3 them to me and I get them on my computer and I listen to them on my iPhone. And so I have no idea how many I listen to, but it's just as hard. It's just as hard. Uh, there's not as many singles being released now as there were 10 years ago. And so there's less songs being out there uh, being released on radio, but it's still hard. It's still hard to find a, a hit song, one that really touches you. They're, now they're on a swing of ticks and trucks and tractors and all this kind of stuff, and it's a wave, you know, that's very, very popular. And that's just not me. And so I have to go a different route and, and go to the writers that I know, know what I like, and they always come through for me. Can you so talk a little bit about working with Lily? No, oh, Lily's incredible. She's fun. She's creative. She's always thinking. She's always trying to hone her craft and get it better. She she worked so hard and thought so long and hard on what wig she was going to wear uh, for this sitcom because she doesn't like to repeat anything. And she's so creative. She she wanted to sit with Kevin Abbott, our showrunner, and, and, you know, talk about Lily Mae. This is what Lily May, this is the way I see Lily May. What do you think about that? And I just love her to pieces. I've just been a huge fan forever. I saw her stand up uh, one woman show on Broadway. I've watched all her movies and had her to dinner the other night, Jane and, and Lily, and they're just a hoot. They're just so much fun to hang with. I adore her. What advice are you giving to uh, kids coming up to you, no matter where it would be, uh, whether it be with social media or, or the old fashioned way, hard work, writing your songs, just going door to door? What kind of advice are you giving me? Depends on who it is and how old they are. I, if they're very young, I say take every class you can, um, whether it's theory, whether it's a music class, an instrument class, vocal lessons. Take all the education of music you can, uh, music history. Take everything, absorb it like a sponge. Sing everywhere you can. Play everywhere you can. I don't care if it's church, 4-H club, FFA, um, Rotary Club. Anybody who wants entertainment, volunteer and get that experience. Um, nowadays, and I've talked to Carrie and Kelly both about this, they jumped from singing a little bit in church, singing a little bit here, to instant stardom. And it, uh, Carrie said it, it, was, it just nearly killed her. She didn't understand the impact it would have on her. So as, as much education, I always call it Music 101, just getting up on stage, anywhere you can in front of people, 
is the best education you can get. You know, in in life, I don't care how much success you attain, you still sit in bed at night and stare at the ceiling and ask God, why me? Why you? Well, I don't know, but I've always done what he's told me to do because I know if I don't do it, he's going to give to somebody else the assignment and whatever it is. And um, people always say, what are you going to do next? I said, I don't know, he hadn't told me yet. But I'm waiting, and when it happens, it's the right time. Narvel and I both believe that you don't force things. If you force things, it's never going to work. And if you if you wait and you're, you're still working and you're still putting stuff in the funnel and whatever comes out is what you're supposed to be doing. Not that I ever think you did this, but at what point in your career did you stop imitating and start innovating? Uh, when it was very early on, I was in high school, um, I kept singing Laura Lynn songs and singing just like Laura Lynn. And Mama said, you've got to stop that. I said, stop what? She said, you sound just like Loretta. You can't do that. There's only one Loretta Lynn. You can't do that. And I said, well, how do I do that? And she said, pick up a songbook and then play it on the piano and sing it. And that's the way I learned to be, be myself because I would imitate demo singers. You know, Linda Davis is one of my favorite singers. I absolutely love her. Yeah. And I would, I would sound like her and nervous. what are you doing? I said, what? He said, you're sounding just like Linda. Quit it. Uh, I said, well, I just like the way she sings and the way she phrases. So I really had to work on that. How much of a draw was it for, uh, to be able to incorporate, or how exciting was it? Was it a conceit you had planned to be able to showcase songs on your, on your sitcom? It seems like, like in the pilot, you get to showcase a song. How hard is it? No. How, how much of a draw was it? How, how important was it to incorporate it for you? Because you were talking it's hard to get a single out there. Well, this is a great way to do it True, very true. Um, it, it, was, it was so much different than the Reba show because I wasn't a singer. And since I am a singer on this one, it's honest. It just makes sense to be singing on the television show. And the way we did it on the pilot, uh, I had to come up with something But if I'm going to get into that door for my record executive. So it was very honest. And just to kind of break into song for no reason is kind of silly to do that. But when you have a reason to it, that's why I really like, I, that's another reason I was really drawn to this. Did you ever read, uh, uh, Would you tell us about, do you have a certain uh, model or is there a best advice someone's what gave you that's always helped you throughout your life? Yes. Um, Roy Acuff, the Statler brothers, Mel Tillis, they all gave me great advice. And... Um, the best one was surround yourself with wonderful people because if, you, if you're around a bunch of thugs who don't have great ideas, you're not going to learn anything. He said, surround yourself with really good people and you'll learn from them. And always smarter than me. They've got to be, I want them to be smart people. And I do, I hang out with smart people and I learn from them. Did you ever meet uh, Kitty Wells? No. No, I never met Kitty. I was a huge fan. Always a huge fan. Was there ever a thing when you were talking about surround yourself with good people, I did see a senator who kind of fell from grace. You know, he's a veterinarian, and he was talking about the lesson he learned was not to have pe yes men. Oh, yeah. And he didn't know I, it at the time. I don't have yes people. Did you have to learn that a hard way or something? Did you? No, I didn't have to learn it the hard way. That's just who all I gravitated to. People who were just like, you're not going to wear that, are you? Are you going to go out in that? Are you finished? Getting ready? Are you serious? Go back in there. You know, it's it's one of those type of things where lovingly, if they if they didn't love me, they wouldn't tell me. But they're not going to let me walk out in front of the world looking like that. So you know, it's and they go, really, that's what you're going to wear, or you're going to say that. You can't say that to those people. And instead of, oh, that was the right thing. No, if it was wrong, I was told. Keeps me humble. When you see when you see Blake Shelton on The Voice or John Richmond, Celebrity Apprentice, has country finally made it? Would you say? Finally? No, I think country's been going really well for a long time because uh, there was Johnny Cash, Glenn Campbell, Dolly Parton had their own TV shows years ago, very successful. Barbara Mandrell had a huge variety show, um, and she chose to stop that because it, she was touring and doing the television show at the same time. So country music has been very much in the forefront of um, television, movies. So I think it's, it's just kicking butt again here. It kind of goes in cycles. Well, the reason I say that because I couldn't relate to that then. I can now, and I and I love it now. That's why I'm saying with that, you get more of a, an ethnic audience coming in, whether it be here or around the world. Well, why do you think? 
Well, for me, I hang out with a lot and I enjoy it. Uh -huh. So the more I heard it, the more I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very relatable music. It always has been, but it's it, 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 it the cycle it's in right now, it's feel good. It's not so... Um, it, you know, before, it just ripped your heart apart, and it was all so sad, and um, I'm not with the one I want, and, and he's she's with the one he's with, and and it was just really sad and dis disturbing. Now it's all uplifting and fun and happy and, and feels good. That might be a reason why it's doing so well now, again, yeah. I think. Reba, can I have you look at this and just say, this is Reba? Sure. Or whatever. Okay. Keep it right here. Okay. Hey, this is Reba. Keep it right here. So Thank you all very much. Good visiting with you.